draw some breath in. And then send the breath out. listening to inside yourself. Breath is what powers your voice. Breathe it in. And, it out. and you're gonna go ah with that color blue just coming out of your mouth. One, two, three. Ah. I just wanted to introduce Kim Haight, who's the executive director of the Canadian Association of Elizabeth Fry Societies. Well, thank you. It's nice to see some of you I've uh, who I've met before, and although I always wish I was seeing you not in, in jail, but most of us in the system, including those of us who work with E. Fry, often don't think about what could it be like if we had something very different. And so one of the things I wanted to ask you guys to do is imagine that. So if, if I had X, how, how could I end up not being in here? Because I have borderline personality disorder, so it's hard for me to deal with stuff, so I act out and get myself charged, that's why I'm in here. And we don't have enough treatment with people with mental health disorders, it's so hard. Not having that motherly love, basically, how do you fix abandonment? How do you fix that? How do you go and find a rehab that'll show you that you are loved? Being without that affection is what got me here. Looking back now, Tasha, what would you have needed? Um, I think someone to just listen to me. Personally, that's, that's my thing, you know, I'm, I'm an alcoholic and I've never went to court and them say, well, we're gonna send you to, to, to recovery, you know, and I've been in and out of here for 10, 10 or more years. Um, it's always been straight to jail. But, okay, so you guys, did you know how much it cost to keep you guys in prison? 
let's say a conservative estimate is $100,000. You know, just imagine if instead of coming to jail, 100,000 bucks, what could you create so that you wouldn't end up back in here? This is your close-up, Laura. In my world, mothers would have to love their children. Affection is a must. Rape and abuse wouldn't exist in my world. Those words wouldn't even exist in the English language. I swear I could feel my heart begin to decay. I've never felt more hurt or been more betrayed. The drive with this stranger didn't take long before we pulled up outside to my first group home. I didn't know how to handle myself. I cut with anything that's sharp and pointy, and it helps me cope. What if we wrote down some of the words that we had to draw to today, yeah. and we thought about writing haikus to them? That's a great idea. OK. What writing? So, what? Haikus? Um, Japanese poems. Yeah. Five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables? Yeah. I am beautiful, strong, independent, and incarcerated. See all of you here, talented women in groups. Welcome in my home. Okay, so. <laughs> 8.30 work time, beeps, bangs, echoes from the pod, East unit, full time. <laughs> Utopian dream, value, support, respect me. Strong woman revered. I always think, why isn't there grass? Why isn't there a tree? At least give us a tree, but that doesn't happen. I don't like it, but I still smudge, and I still believe that it's heard, like deep inside of me. That will never go away. I mean, really, you want to have interviewed me 20 years ago. And then I would have said, oh, we could take down these walls, we could put some windows, we could paint them, we can make it all look much nicer. But I don't think there's anything you can do. You could have the most beautiful, you could be in a penthouse. And, but if you can never leave, then it's still a prison. More than half of the women who are in prison are racialized women. Most of them are mothers. Most of them are poor. Many of them have experienced horrific violence as children and as adults. And so they very early on dealt with mental health issues or addiction issues. Remember, what are you today? I'm a filmmaker and That's I'm sober. Right. That's right. Okay. 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 Thank you so much. Freedom. Freedom. I have one female for release, Trina Smith, time expiring. Peace. All right, later. Bye. Free. Free. Be good, Trina. I don't want to see you back. I will. Nervous. Freed, released, unleashed. Time complete. Walking back into society. Riddled with anxiety. Prepared, unaware, scared, scared from the things I've made so hard. Told you guys I was a gardener, landscaper for a while, so I'd always think of these weeds growing up, how the lawn was cut. Nobody whipper snipped the edges. 
<laughs> There's my knocks. They're doing some good knocking. You know, their knuckles are sore. <laughs> Right? You're never going away again. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna they're gonna let me this for the day, and I'm gonna do some videoing. I better wash my hair. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're about my wife. I'm your wife. And you're sober. I'm sober. Very. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, baby, I'm just taking, I'm just taking some shots. How is it? I always want to be your shoulder, your sturdy boulder, your warmth when nights turn colder. The one to still think you're beautiful as we both get older. Yeah. I'd give anything just to hold her. Except for the one of me crouching down, I want that at the end. Those days can get rough, but you know you have to stay tough. Being strong is a must. When I get out, this time will be dust. I love that, man. Yeah. In my world, poverty wouldn't exist. That is so freaking cool. I love it. I'm excited. It's me. It's my voice. My words, when spoken, should be taken seriously. In my world, addiction wouldn't exist. We wouldn't ever become addicted to anything because nothing would be addictive. I wish I could bring them with me. This is all so surreal. <laughs> Just gotta get all my ducks in line <laughs> and go for it. Where are you going? I uh, just going. You know where? I don't know. I have nowhere else to go. Vernon, what am I gonna do? I thought you were gonna stay out here. I'm broke. <laughs> no, let's get going then. Uh, give me two horns and get your breakfast, and then I gotta get to work. You know, some of these women that are getting out of jail. They don't have an address. We're out of here. You start life. You can't believe it. Some of them don't even have a drive. You gotta give them a bus ticket. So then here's your bus ticket. See you later. Hope you succeed. Um, shameful, but I'm drunk now and uh, it's too hard. Still have love in my heart. Don't want to go back to jail. It's faded. On the weekend, we had quite a few drinks and got into some arguments up pretty violent. I have no coping skills and when I'm drunk and being a self-harmer, I, uh, I lit myself on fire.
Like, it's fucking mind games, man. It's fucking me up. And she fucking ratted me out twice, and I still fucking love her. Nothing has got come good out of this relationship. No, like I'm a fucking idiot too. Like I fucking, I, you know it. No, when she, when she, when when they read the fucking disclosure, like I, it's very upsetting. Like fucking the things I do, man. Uh. Hi, Claire. Hi, Caitlin. I miss you. I miss you too. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Baby girl, you did it the first time. There, you're on camera. Aww, yeah. <laughs> How you doing? Good, I'm getting out. Nine more sleeps. Nine. What do you want for your first day out? What do you want for meals? Are you gonna make your cheesecake for me for Easter? Yeah, if you make them their Easter bunny cake. With them? Yeah. I'm doing so good with my thoughts and self-harming. You wouldn't believe it. No, like, I don't even have them. You're gonna be a great success at home, Caitlin. Your new beginning. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. You're crying. <laughs> oh my god, we're so emotional today. Cause it's getting close to you yeah. coming home. I know. We're gonna cry when we see each other. It's gonna be good. Yeah. I love you. I love you be safe. I will. Promise. Mom, I will. All right. Love you. I love you too. Bye. Bye. Doesn't matter their age, you just want the best for them. Home is never enough. She's institutionalized. As much as she loves me and as much as I love her, and as much as she loves her family, it's not enough for her. We can't recreate the structure that the institutions have created for her. We can't replace the safety for her. She doesn't feel safe at home. She only feels safe here or in hospital, which they'll never take her back in any hospital here. She lived a year and a half in the IWK, then nine months in Abbey Lane. And then once that ended, she went to the jails and she'll keep reoffending to get back to jail for the safety. It's her safety net. Um, I am quiet, but I need to speak. Um, so much emotion pours out of me. My head just spins um, each passing day. I need you to hear what I have to say. Um, I've learned to be silent, but it never helps. Um, Why do you like that shot? Um, I'm thinking about that red door. Um, I did something really bad. I wanted to smudge, and they were using the smudge kit lighter to smoke banana, and I got mad, and I took her head, and I put it into the metal door. I got five days in my cell for that. And I know where there's grass. I can see it. I can see it. Now I can see the grass. 
and you can tell what time of year it is by the colors. And a couple times I try to touch, but you can't quite touch it. So close, but so far away. Fuck. Um, leaning up against my new home. Uh, my first day, I ended up staying on the roof of an apartment building. I didn't really sleep, I just kind of had a towel and laid there and got myself uh, delauded and used for the first time in eight months. It's sad to say, like, a couple times I said, I wish I was back in jail. And that's really, really sucks. So I have to say that. I feel really stupid. I was supposed to do good. You guys were supposed to come and see me and see that I was positive and excited about getting out. And everything just didn't go as planned at all. It's really hard. It really is. Yeah, I've just kind of been wandering around and trying to figure out where I fit in. high school. I don't miss that school at all. But I was just mad at the world. When I was a kid, I was abused. No one really helped me or uh, it was just kind of a lost cause, I guess. Hi, my name is Bianca Mercer. I'm trying to get a bed. If you guys can get back to me, that would be great. I am unable to take your call at the moment. Please leave a detailed message and number and I'll get back to you. I'm in need of help really bad. I'm heading to detox in the next week or so, and I have no place to live. I'm, I'm barely getting by out here. I need help. We're building more and more prisons and acting as though we think prisons can somehow be treatment centers, shelters for battered women, adequate housing, and then we take people in and then throw them back out on the street and expect them to fend for themselves. The key in terms of responding to questions is to remember what the key messages are and not to get taken off track. Reduce numbers of women in prison. Not, not improve the conditions, but reduce the number in, and as an interim step, close segregation. Good morning. We're a network of 25 societies across the country 
We are here today to discuss the urgent need for action to address the circumstances of criminalized and imprisoned women. I was asked to come here by our advocacy team because not only is this the region where Ashley Smith died, a young woman who was put in custody after not receiving support and care in the community, but since then we've now had two more deaths in federal custody. We are wasting billions and billions of dollars on putting people into prisons. And even those working in federal custody are throwing up their hands. They recognize most of the women they are dealing with should not be there in the first place, but they have no choice but to try and manage the best they can. It's hard. When you're a correctional officer, you're supposed to be strong, you're not supposed to be weak, you're not supposed to be able to be affected by anything. But when you know their story, I look at it as the fact that they never even had a chance. Hello, Mama. I could still separate myself from the jail. It took a long time for me to learn how, but I eventually did. When I come home and I see her and him and the dog and the cat, that's my life. That's my world. Be nice. Good boy. Get your tail. Get it. Get it, bud. Traffic is moderate to heavy Dartmouth Halifax from the McDonald Bridge. So take the McCain. Weather on the hour looking like it's getting warmer day today. I usually hold my breath when I'm doing my nails. That way I don't make a mistake. I believe that there's a lot more of me to give. Unfortunately, that would mean crossing over boundaries. Some days I feel like I'm in prison. It's gonna be a good day. Everything's gonna go right. And everyone's gonna go home safe. I got arrested and charged with more trafficking and robbery and breaches and I'm pregnant and probably going to have a baby that I won't be able to raise and yeah. You know, what was missing, what wasn't there for you um, when you got released that I you needed? Um, a place to live. A home. Yeah. So I was in a vacant apartment in a rundown building that is, it was like 60 days exactly I was back in here. Mm -hmm. I really thought your life was going to change when you got out. So did I. I mean, it was awesome at host. The staff were awesome. It was about the people that was living there with me. And that's the hardest thing, because there's still people in that host that are using. There's not enough housing availability for these ladies. They can't get social assistance unless they're out of here. How is that even possible? They need an address to get it. They make it so difficult for these ladies to succeed. That's all they need is a helping hand once they get out the back door. They need a place for women to go when they get out of jail. Especially for people that's been here. I'll be here for 14, 15 months by the time I get out. And I'm not, it's going to be a shock. We need yeah. something that's going to help you. Reintegrate. Reintegrate. I, yeah, I would love to just come across a suitcase full of money and just open up my own, my own farm and just take people in without any bullshit, right? Yeah. That'd be so sick. Yeah. We'll hire you. Yes. You, got, you don't have to work here no more. We'll there double you your wages. <laughs> yeah. Then I'll come. <laughs> Lights, camera, action. Uh, Check, one, two. Oh, look at that. Construction in the making right here. Three stories. Yeah. Yeah. We're building our own place. Like, there's a lot that I. Yeah, I just got like a. Like if you have, uh, this would be so bomb if this like actually happened. There you go. Isn't that something? Well, you said chickens for the eggs. 
Yes, yes, tell her to come. Yes. yes. Did, did you get a picture? I want to see. Oh my god! Oh my god! It's a it's a picture of her her baby. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, uh, what are they what are they called? I'm sorry, I was so excited. See the head? Do you see the head? Oh my god! We're building our house. We need your ideas, Elders. Okay, what, what, here's, a, here's a big question. What are we going to call this place? Uh, either a word or um, an animal or a bug or something that symbolizes something that goes from one thing. <gasps> something happened. Well, something that goes up. from. Yes. I like that. Smoking will be outdoors, maintain sobriety, attend programs, weekly issue suggestions, like a weekly meeting, meeting every week. Yeah. We're learning to be independent again. Well, That's what this it, house is for. When Nelson Mandela came in as president, one of the first moves he did was to free all the women in prison who had children under the age of 12. To relegate a mother to prison was to subjugate generations to come. I was a working class kid. I went to the law school because I wanted to make money. I was raised to believe, you know, you do the crime, you do the time. And what became really clear is the women that I worked with were all the people who had the least. I was really fortunate that I'd had other opportunities that most of these people didn't have. Get that big one. As I got more in touch with that humanity, it became harder to not want to do something about it. I don't mind shoveling. In all the work I do, there's so many things you can't see the results of right away, but shoveling, you can see the results right away. Hello. Really, it's about talking about non-prison responses to human behaviors. And it's why I spend a lot of time encouraging people to think about the trauma that people who are incarcerated have first experienced. Even though individuals may have committed really egregious acts of violence, understanding the context of that violence is really important. Not to excuse it, but to demand that we actually address it in a different way, in a way that doesn't perpetuate it or negate it, but prevents it from happening again. So the basic idea is from the ground up, a host for women to go to after incarceration. So why would you have it after prison? Why not instead of prison? Um, <laughs> because society doesn't really give us that option. Um, if I could get help before coming here, I probably wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. so. But what if you went to court and they said you're either going to prison for six, 12, 18 months, or you have the choice of going to from the ground up? I would go to the ground up because there, they'd be able to help me find out what is going on. There's something inside of me that's obviously screaming out for help but doesn't know what it is. And you know what? When I get out, I ain't going to get that help. I'm, I'm going to be basically to myself. I don't get the help on the outside. I pop pills. I pop my prescriptions. I drink cough medicine. and I get drunk. Of alcohol, I don't get the help. They put me in a merge, give me charcoal, and send me to jail. That's all I do. That's how I get my help. That's why we need. I place. don't get my help. <laughs> See if you get you get more support when you're here. Yeah. It's not that we want to be here. It's sometimes where else do we have to go? No, I I get that. <laughs> I've never been told from a doctor professionally that I have anxiety, but I know I do. Sometimes I'm in my cell. I, like they took, they did a search, and I got so overwhelmed. I started crying because they took my clothes. Like, and I know I'm pregnant, but just thinking about it gets you so worked up. 
because you have no control. And that's the thing, it's hard to control. Yeah, it's... Like when my impulses come, I automatically react act on it. I spent nine months and say, that, that's, not, that's not helping me. Well, it's I don't, not just not helping you, it's against the law. They do it to me all the time. I got told nine months and said, out of the 13 months I've been here, I don't have bipolar or I have borderline. Yeah, and my only point is that usually those are diagnosis given when really people are struggling with histories of being abused as kids, yeah, you know, and then not asking. That's what happened with me. And usually it's really post-traumatic stress, not... They haven't diagnosed me with that yet. Well, part of the reason they don't is because then, then the state is responsible for providing you with treatment. Borderline says you can control it. I mean, I don't see any benefit to prison to anybody. And so I encourage you to think about much bigger than just inside the box of prison. That if a resource existed in the community, there are ways lawyers and judges could be convinced to have you go there. If you're gonna spend that much money on this person in jail, then spend that much money in the community. But in the short term, there are ways to try and help you get out and get on your feet so you can have a chance of raising your kid. My experience with individuals in prison is it's really hard for them to actually imagine the, the prison not existing. So they're always thinking of something that is still about their containment. I'm the one who makes art with orphan beads. Because no one wants them. They remind me of all those forgotten souls in the prisons around the world. When you give them a chance, they're the most beautiful creations born. I'm painting what the vision would be for from the ground up. Lots of grass and trees and nature. Lots of like spirituality, like a different style of society. Um, my dad was in a residential school. I always saw my dad drunk and like when you're from a place where like there's always drinking and violence around, you think it's normal. So when you grow up and if someone gets bossy with you or whatever, in our mind it would be okay to hit them and then boom, they call the cops and you're charged with assault and then you're right into the system. And then you wonder what you're like when you get outside. Hi, I'm, I have Caitlin Hill, the release time is fired. Five B, Bye-bye, Jail, never to come back. Never come back. What is today? New beginning. New beginning. First day for the rest of your life. Yeah. Still look the same, Caitlin? Yes. Love it. She's so happy to see ya. I know. <laughs> this is my home. My mom, and you can come see my room. Oh my, I love it. Oh my. This is my room. Can't wait to sleep in an actual bed, eating real food. Love it. It's feeling weird looking outside for the first time without like having to worry about bars or door shutting.
No, it's yeah. really a, it's a very bad space. Yeah. 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 Hello. I'm really thrilled to be here and to meet you, you and these filmmakers have shown us some of the work that you've already done, which is so impressive. And um, just a little bit about myself, I've been an architect for about 30 years. In the last while, one of my favorite projects that I worked on was Supportive Housing for Young Mothers, SHIM. I'm in, actually um, going to SHIM here in the next couple weeks. So I'm excited. Yeah. Have you been there? You I've been, been inside. Um, yeah. I actually, in my apartment is the first one right on the first floor. Okay. Number one. So. Uh -huh. I think we need to know a bit more about what you've done already. Uh, the first stage would be like the rehab, relapse, prevention program. And then the second stage will be more uh, programs and privacy. You have like a mentor and a life coach and stuff. But on the third stage, like, if you can try to become one life coach, mentor, mm. you know, I want there to be land so, like, the girls can work and, you know, uh, grow and have, you know, some animals, uh, some tranquility, like, forest around, uh, trails. What I'm hearing is um, this kind of circular, beautiful, yep. just this idea that it's not just for people to go in and be taken care of. It's for them to also take come and take care yep. of the other people, yep. the new people coming in. It's just really quite moving. It's, it's a really nice idea. I know for me, like, I have, I have really little, like, self-esteem and self-worth, but, like, when I'm involved in this, and I know that, like, I might even help one person, like, it, like, it helps me, like, like, it makes me feel good about myself, right? Um, and, uh, and I think just, like, our experiences, like, talking to all the women I've met in jail, like, have changed me a little bit. And, um, and uh, I, just, I just think they're very strong women and they have a lot to say. You obviously have shown that you're all really good at expressing yourselves through drawing. Grab a marker and write uh, or draw what you're thinking about. Dreaming. The more you can draw, the closer you're going to be to achieving the project. Uh, Honestly, keep your snarky little comments to yourself. Because I'm going to go. And I've got my desk, and I have my chair that I sit in. Be snarky in front of the camera. Come here. Because I swear to God, do you two want to go back to the camera? You can fuck this up for me. It's my fucking shit for you to go. And this place has just got me so down emotionally that I had to literally, like, escape. All I ever wanted was to be a mother. I'm completely helpless. My life is not a form of entertainment. Where is all the integrity? How can one's suffering be one's victory? My body is still in motion, but I'm living lifelessly. And you go like that. That's <laughs> Brayden. So, I'm home now. It is day one. It is going really, really good. I feel happy. I feel everything. I'm recording you. What you doing, Brayden? Is that your, what's her name? So, this is day two of being home. Mm, it's okay, but I do miss it. Jungle cheese and chuckle feet parade. Those guys remind me of those great mistakes I made. I know I'm not an angel, no, my worst on earth. Release me from my shackles, let me prove my worth. Release me from my shackles, let me prove my worth. 
Let me swing for my shackle. Let me prove my worth. Hi, baby. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Sister, you look really nice. Hi. I missed you. I missed you too. Peace. Okay, I don't ever want to come back here again. Me neither. each other that um, you know we, we kind of keep on the down low and not drink and be good to each other and I think three days into it we were already drinking and uh, uh, A week and a half later, I was back in jail. Okay, so this is the letter. Okay. We can rewrite it. Okay. And send it for Friday with a plan. Jail is not working. We want to press for an alternative okay. to incarceration. Okay. Because the last time you were here, we talked about this, and you, you said, I'm done. I'm done with this. This is not working. Why did nobody do this? So we're going to do it, if you're willing and you want to. Well, I don't even think they're going to touch it. You don't? I don't, not the least. I'm just tired of fucking looking like the monster all the time. I don't really know what to think about any of this. I'll leave you this. And if you're not interested, you're not interested. But this might be the opportunity to, to do something different rather than be here. Okay. You know, we can give it our best shot. I have a bunch of complications with the pregnancy Nobody at the prison or the hospital listened to me. I was surprised, you fry. Like, they got me out to have my baby outside of prison. And this is the baby's room. about ever having to go back to jail. I don't ever want to lose my daughter. Life is changing for once and I'm actually happy, so it's awesome. Those are my pants too, if you really want them. and it wasn't too bad. It's frustrating sometimes. So today, it, it's been six days since I've been home 
and haven't been doing too well. This is what I did. So it hasn't been going good, but I told my mom, so it's good. A lot of stress tonight. I will do this again later. Three days ago, I found out my baby died inside of me. And I never really got to know who she was. And this is me. I want you to know that I, I love you so, so much. Promise to just be my angel <laughs> to look after me, to keep me out of harm's way. Honorable Senators, uh, as this is my first speech in the upper chamber of our Parliament, today I am both honoured and humbled to rise in this chamber to call attention to the circumstances of some of the most marginalised, victimised, criminalised and institutionalised in our country, and to encourage us to focus in particular on the increasing over-representation of Indigenous women in Canadian prisons. And this is why I call upon you, my new colleagues. I ask that we work together to give a voice to those who have too long been rendered voiceless. 
I don't think I'll ever get used to people calling me Senator Pate. It was kind of a shock. I got calls from women inside, and I said to them, I expect you guys to hold me to account if I don't do what I'm supposed to do in this job. I'm kind of scared. Thinking that, what if a bird flies too close to my head? What if a car drives too close to me and he hits me? Go to the store, there's no pennies anymore. Like having a two liter bottle of pop touching grass, being right next to a tree, to hug my son. What's it gonna be like? Caitlin lasted eight weeks at home. Um, she did property damage. So she was sentenced to 56 days, which her doctor requested her to go to the forensic building again. It was a good visit. She seemed very pumped today. Um, 11 more sleeps and she gets to come home. Then there's going to be a placement supposedly in Truro. When she was released from corrections, she had five days of medication, so I had five days to get her into a GP, which I we had to go to the walk-in clinic. Then the province pays for Caitlin's medication and they wouldn't cover Abilify, which she was prescribed. Um, so she had to go off that medication, uh, which, you know, certainly didn't help for success at home. You know, mommy will always care and she knows that, but she needs to feel that the system's there for her. It looks like it's going to be a, a long day. Okay. One way or the other. Um, I know she wants to work and just live. But they're not likely to go for that. It may not be the treatment that she envisions, you know, like seven to nine, Monday to Friday kind of thing. Um, but treatment is an alternative. Okay, good. I'm happy because it's. It feels like it's always on my shoulders, and it's always like you know. It's, I'm the only person that she has outside, so it's it's hard. We don't have parents. We don't have people for that outlet. We didn't grow up with that, so Trina relies on me for that. So how many times have you been here for Trina? Over 80, probably, in the last 15 years. I come in, every, anytime Trina's um, arrested, I come in and I, I essentially just come and be her support. but I don't want her to ever walk in that courtroom and not see my face because we don't have my mom supporting her or my dad or anybody. When she walks in the courtroom, she has that, okay, you know, I have her, I, she's here. I'm, I'm out, but I kind of feel not out at the same time. Um, he decided to give me time served, but have the no contact order with my wife. I'm not really sure how to feel, but I am going to give the transition house a chance. But I'm happy. I'm happy. It's nice out. See, and it's recording now. Okay. Okay. Hopefully this will be your last move for a bit. Thanks for everything. You're welcome. So, this is a new chapter, and hopefully, uh, hopefully this will straighten me out at least a little bit. So, I'm going to let you see as much as I can, camera. Having a baby wasn't going to make me happy. It also didn't make me very happy losing her. But some things 
He can't change. And I've made too many changes in my life to turn back now. Everyone expects me to relapse, to drown in everything I've been through. I know I want to do good, and I want to be good. I want to be able to support myself. I want to be able to have children and be happy, and I want to be off methadone. I want to be mentally stable. That's a lot to take on. I like having the, the support every day, but I'm also scared like the longer that I stay here, the more comfortable I'm gonna be and it's gonna be harder for when I do leave. So I'm like, that's kind of what's going in my head right now. The more I've been relapsing to, I like I don't sit there and I'm like, this is fun anymore. I think it's uh, the last couple times I used really gave me a different outlook. I recently started to think about how things affect other people. I regret hurting people. I regret not grabbing opportunities in my life. It's a never-ending battle. I see a place where I'm safe. What we thought we'd do today is to get creative with you. I see a place where I'm never going to be told I'm not accepted. How do all these pieces that you've told us about, how do they sit together? I see a place where I'm never going to feel rejected. Inside the house, are we still going to run with the idea of our tree? I see a place where I want to learn and where I want to teach. I and mean, this is kind of like a cabin. Oh, that would be so nice. How are we going to convince whoever puts all that money into jail, how are we going to convince them to stop doing that and put the money into us? It's going to have to start out really small, you know, and, and leave the dream kind of later. But the dream, it isn't unrealistic in my, in my mind. When projects fail, it's because they don't have a strong vision. You guys have a, the, the strongest vision. From the ground up is a home for us women to grow, learn, recreate our lives without the use of prisons. Let's use the money for a better cause. Jails do not help us. It will be a place where you learn to love other people and yourself. A place that gives you a sense of responsibility. It's a place that gives you something to work towards, building your self-esteem and confidence. When you are needed and a part of something, it gives you a sense of community, a community where everyone is reliant on each other. I've never felt so good about something, so compassionate about something. I've never felt so able, you know, just to be able to do something. From the ground up is, you know, it, it, it's the hopes that we can give these women their self-worth back, find ways to make, make these people feel useful again and beautiful. It's up to us to come together to help these women who've been wronged so bad that need us to reach out for them. I only hope that I can be a part of it straight to the end um, and to see it through. I would think it would be a great opportunity for you guys to present this to the minister responsible for corrections because what you proposed looks an awful lot like Blueprint for Change, which was a plan that was put in place close to 30 years ago. So it's not really a question, sorry, it was a comment. <laughs> when will you be ready to do that presentation? There's the question. <laughs> Yesterday, I. I spoke in front of the guards I'm about to go see. When things are going good, something bad, something bad always happens. I said I was able, huh? Able to go to jail. 
They can't do this. They put a no contact order on the father and the child. Oh, that necklace that's super important, that's my daughter's ashes. Sophia's ashes. Wow. One breach. I'll get out on the fifth. 20 days. Yeah, she can't be strip searched yet. <sighs> I have Bianca Mercer. believe that I'm worth something, that I'm more than just a number. That's what you told me, but we're more than the scars that shape us. So grateful when you get to go old. I'm so happy. Is that crazy? Yeah. Get nervous? You get excited? Yes, I'm really nervous. Well, well Alan. Alan. <laughs> I love you. I love you. Lock up, ladies. Lock up. I would never, ever want to um, discourage women from coming up with a plan like the women came up with. And we've got, you know, countless examples. Um, like, we can just look here. We've got, at the federal and provincial level, we've got uh, exactly what the women proposed. Creating Choices was, um, was tabled in April of 1990 by the federal government to, and it, it is still seen internationally as the most groundbreaking, human rights-based, women-centric, women-directed model. And now we have six little prisons for, well, big now. The number of women in them is more than we're at the prison for women, which they were built to replace. And they all started out cottage-style, little houses, no fences, no eye-in-the-sky cameras, no segregation. Every single one of these initiatives before they were even finished being built, were becoming more and more prison-like. The failure of this is what propelled the Canadian Association of Elizabeth Fry Societies to embrace an abolitionist perspective. Nobody's stopping, stemming the tide coming in. I think we actually have to just do an about-face. Bianca or Trina or anybody else to think I have to do this and it's all on me to make this work. No, we'll get as far as we can and and if we don't get to the exactly where we want to be we'll just keep pushing to try and get there. So tonight we continue our study on the issues relating to the human rights of prisoners. Just please come forward and take a seat please. Which, which button do I press here to... Oh, the one, it's this one, okay. Okay, uh, my name's Trina Smith. This is the longest I've been out in probably four years, so I'm doing all right. We started working on a documentary two and a half years ago, um, basically talking about what we need from society to keep ourselves out of prison and trying to look at opening up a transition house, perhaps in the country, having women so they don't have to get out and get on social assistance, making a paycheck, getting their independence back. It's <laughs> pretty incredible. Yes, it's, 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 it's a long journey. Okay. Canada has the resources, and we can and should be a leader in decarcerating. We need to be investing in people, and certainly not in prisons.
really symbolizes us growing and becoming a family and we're coming out the mud, man. You know, a tree represents strength to me and that's what we all need right now. From the ground up, ladies, this little guy's gonna take us home. And I know there's other girls who are missing and it sucks they're not here, but we're gonna bring them with us. I'm deciding that I need to make myself better first. I still have a long way to go, mind you. I'm not I'm not cured or anything, but I I just feel more hopeful today. I'm in Churro in a group home setting. I'm out in the community. I can go out for a walk with staff. I would hate to go back to prison. I feel safe living here. That's a pretty picture. Layers of my life. Peeling back the layers, dealing with my problems. Happy to have my family be on my side. Tired of not knowing if I've got any friends. I want to be an advocate. I want to fight for women. I want to fight the system. My dream job is to be a lawyer, and I want to go to school for that. Hey, Laura. <laughs> Oh my god. I can't believe to hear that. Like, for real. This is cool. <laughs> oh, I'm cheap. Okay, let's walk, man. Let's get out of here.
jangle keys and shuffle feet parade Those sounds remind me of those great mistakes I made I know I'm not an angel, no my worst on earth Release me from my shackles, let me prove my worth Release me from my shackles, let me prove my worth Release me from my shackles, let me prove my worth More than a number Gotta believe that I'm worth something More than a number Then I'm more than just a number More than a number Told me I was just a number. Can't take my hope, I was a dreamer. Gotta live with my many sins. My imperfect self shines within. Gotta prove to a world over and over again. It's exhausting being so angry. I'm the one who makes art with orphan beats because no one wants them. They remind me of all of us, forgotten soul in all prisons around the world. When you give them a chance, they're the most beautiful creations born. When you give us a chance, we're the most beautiful creations born. I am so quiet, but I need to speak. So much emotion pours out of me. I wish I could tell you how I feel, but I'm so scared of what's real. for hearing our own personal thoughts you need to remember never give up never give up never never give up never give up never never give up raise up raise up your pain will go and notice you are not alone you can set yourself free and build yourself a home beyond the fence we see common ground mm -hmm.